Um, I am out at down in D.C. at the Mathematical Association of America doing some grant review. Pretty cool, huh? Or nerdy, whichever. Um, so, after your quiz, please get your warm-up book and practice graphing and labeling these two functions. Right? Notice that the base is 4 for both of them. So graphing 4 to the x needs the y-intercept, needs the point 1 comma 4, needs the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and since the base is greater than 1, I am going to slide slowly to the y-intercept and swoosh to infinity. To graph its inverse, where the base is also greater than 1, I don't have the point zero 1, I have the point 1, 0. I don't have the point 1, comma the base, I have the base 4, comma 1. I don't have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. I'm not concave up, I'm concave down, but I still slide. But I slide quickly to the x-intercept and swoosh slowly. not necessary, but if I'm graphing these on the same axis, I should see a symmetry across the line y equals x, because logs and exponents of the same base are inverses of one another. So today we are just going to take these basic log and basic exponential graphs and shift them, move them. So take your notes on transformations of exponentials and log graphs, so I'm going to start with exponentials. So y equals 4 to the x. Again, the base is greater than 1. So I know I have a slide swoosh. First thing I want you to do is describe in words. Right? And I'm pretty picky about this. What I want to what I want to know is what has happened to the slide swoosh. So inside x taken care of first because x is your domain. Domain always comes first. So my slide swoosh has been moved one unit to the right. Then you take care of the range. That's the only domain issue. That's the only thing happening to x. The exponentiation here does your slide swoosh. The next thing you take care of is um, operations in the or you know by Aunt Sally, right? Which would be multiplication. So your dilation factor is multiplied by a number greater than one. Therefore, my graph is stretched. vertically, right? You could say, um, right, what do we say? We can say, um, um, it's like a parabola is thinner, right, or wider, depending upon the dilation factor. It's hard to say that with a slide swoosh. You see it rises quicker, um, rises faster than if your dilation factor is one. And then, of course, the minus 2 means your whole graph has been shifted or moved two units down. So how did, what is the translation given f of x changing it to g of x? Right, so in words, you need to take care of 
a move a movement on X, a movement on Y, and a dilation factor. Transformations. So in general, ew, it shouldn't be a star. It should be a times. In general, what happens if you take your exponential function, this is your parent function, your parent, your home, your base, ha ha ha, function. And then of course what happens to logs? This is your parent, your base, or your home, or your base graph. How, what happens when it gets transformed? The dilation factor is a vertical or horizontal stretch, right? And you know that it's vertical when the absolute value of A is greater than 1, and horizontal when the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, right? Think your parabola, 2x squared versus a half x squared. Inside x, domain, is a horizontal horizontal shift, right or left, and then adding or subtracting after the exponentiation, logging, and dilation factor is a vertical shift up and down. So, how to graph transformations and get full credit, <laughs> right? mentally, right, in your head. Now, I'm going to do this for real, but you don't have to actually do this. But you need to mentally sketch the parent graph, right? You need to know your, right, an exponential with, oops, that's supposed to be a B. Is it a slide swoosh? Or is it a swoosh slide? Log, base greater than one? slide swoosh or slide swoosh. So, step one, label your horizontal asymptote on the real one. And remember that's a Y issue. Label the points that I always told you to label. That's for exponentials. For logs, label your vertical asymptote. Label the points. And again, this is of your home graph. Then where were each of these things transformed? Those are the three things along with the shape that I must see in order for you to get full credit on your transformation. So I write down my dilation factor, my base, my horizontal shift, my vertical shift. And then I use the order of operations. I know it goes A, B, C, D, but using the order of operations, the first thing I do is a horizontal shift because that's domain. The second thing I do is the multiplication, the dilation factor. Multiply your Y, right? After you've done X, you apply the base, right? And this base det determines is it an exponential base or is it a log base? And if your base is greater than 1 or between 0 and 1, that's when I take care of the base, right? So next, after you've done x first, the base comes next, really, I should say the base is next, and then everything else is on y. You multiply on y and then you add or subtract y. then plot and label using the same shape that you've mentally sketched already. Make a characteristic list only if asked and with this time for characteristic lists you don't have to find um, well no, I'm not going to say that, never mind. So there should be a handout that the sub has for you to pick up after your quiz 
so number three and number six, whoops, sorry. And um, look at these, each one of these problems. Excuse the pause, I had to go get it myself. So looking at number three, y is equal to 2 to the x plus 3. I first graph 2 to the x. There is no, 2 is not a multiplier, right? There is actually a 1 time. So my dilation factor is 1. My base is 2. My base is greater than 1, which is why I drew a slide swoosh. My C is not 3. What is C? And D was 0. So I take everything my characteristic here, my char the three important characteristics that I've made you label here, my horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. Then you have zero one, and you have one two. The only thing you're supposed to do to x is to subtract so there is no x in the horizontal asymptote. Subtract 3 from both of these x values. You're supposed to multiply each y by 1. And I know this is kind of silly, but don't forget to multiply the horizontal asymptote by 1. then you're also supposed to add 0 to every y. And I know that looks silly right now, but in case your a and your d weren't 1 and 0. So where did my horizontal asymptote go? 1 times 1 is still 1 plus 0. So my horizontal asymptote stayed at y equals 0. The point zero 0,1 went down 3, I'm sorry, went right 3, <laughs> left 3, and 1 times 1 is 1, plus 0 is still 1. The point 1, 2 also went left 3. 1 minus 3 is usually negative 2. I still slide, just not to the y-intercept, slide to the shifted y-intercept, swoosh. You don't have to label the new y-intercept. That's what I was going to say before. Okay. Now let's do the log graph. And I have to have parentheses here if I want you to operate on the x. So same situation. The multiplier is 1. The base is 2, and it's greater than 1. The c is negative 3, and the d is 0. So I graph my original, just log base 2 of x, because I have the point 1, 0, and I have the point 2, 1, and I'm going to slide quickly to the y-intercept, sorry, x-intercept, 
swoosh slowly. The points I have are the vertical asymptote at x equals 0, the point 1, 0, and the point 2, 1. And now I'm going to use all my transformations on them. So I'm going to shift 3 whoops, from every x, including the asymptote. It's an x thing, so you have to shift it by negative 3 units. And then my y, nothing happened to my y, right? Multiplying by 1 and adding 0. So take this vertical asymptote and move it. Take the point, 1, 0, move it. Take the point, 2, 1, move it. 1, 2, 3. And draw the same shape. Rise quickly to the shifted x-intercept. Swoosh slowly. Okay? Let's do number six. And if you want, please feel free to pause the video and see if you can do number six without me. So hopefully here you can see there is a dilation factor of 3. My base is 2 and my base is greater than 1. There is no shift on x, but there is a shift on y. And the same thing here. Dilation factor is 3, base is 2. There is no shift on x. Remember with no parentheses here. Now I know on your handout I put parentheses, but I don't have to. If I don't put parentheses around this x, or this x minus 1, you're assuming that the argument is x and the vertical shift is a negative 1. So remember, every exponential function has an original horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, has the point 0, 1, and has the point 1, comma b. Every log equation, log graph, has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, has the point 1, comma 0, and the point 2, comma 1. So my transformed one, I have to do nothing to x's, right? Add 0. Go over here, add 0 to every x. Then the next two things are y's. You have to multiply before you add and subtract. So every y, multiply by 3. Then add or subtract. So every y has to be, have to have, be shifted by negative 1. So my horizontal asymptote here is at 0 times 3, which is 0, minus 1. The y-intercept went from 0, 1 to 0, 1 times 3, which is 3, minus 1. So I was at 3 and then I went down to 1. Down 1 unit, so I'm at 0, 2. The point 1, comma 2, 1 got added 0, so it's still 1. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And I still slide slowly to the shifted y-intercept. 
and then swoosh all I missed. Here my vertical asymptote was x equals 0 and I added 0 to it so my vertical asymptote does not move. My point one zero one was added 0 so stayed 1 but then I had 0 multiplied by 3 which is still 0 minus 1 which is negative 1. The point 2 comma 1, 2 had 0 added to it, so it was still 2, but then 1 was multiplied by 3 to get it, make it 3, and then 3 was had 1 subtracted, so I'm going to be at 2, 2. Still same shape though, I'm going to slide along the vertical asymptote to the shifted x-intercept and then swoosh slowly. Okay? So you have your handout to finish. I'll be back tomorrow and we will start modeling. Believe it or not, we are done with all the topics um, that would be on the first part of the log test, which would be the non-calculator portion. It's going to take us a couple days uh, we're going to start Friday and then finish after spring break um, of the of exponential um, and log modeling. All right, I will see you tomorrow.